now what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at one more property. There's lots of different properties for Laplace transforms, but here's just one more property that's kind of necessary and kind of useful. Um, and it says, again, if your Laplace transform of some function is f of s, and um, n is one, two, three, and so forth, then the Laplace transform of t to the n, f of t, is negative one to the n, the derivative of that Laplace transform. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find the Laplace transform of T times the hyperbolic sine of three T. So using that formula that we just saw, that theorem we just saw, this will equal negative one. So going back to that theorem, you see you have a negative one to a power, power is N, N is what power you have on the T. So there's a one on the T, so it's negative one to the one. Then it's gonna be the derivative with respect to S of the Laplace, and it's actually, going back to this formula, notice it's N here. So it's the first derivative because my power is one. So same thought here of the um, Laplace transform of the hyperbolic sine of 3t. So we need to first find out what the hyperbolic sine of 3t is. So we're gonna have negative one times the derivative. So going back to my table, the hyperbolic sine, it's, it's Laplace transform is k over s squared minus k squared. It's a lot like the sine, except it's minus instead of plus in the bottom. So it's gonna be k, k is three. So it's gonna be three over s squared minus k squared, so minus one. So there's what we have. We then need to take the derivative of this. So I wanna remind you how to take derivatives. I would probably first write this as I don't like the quotient rule, so I usually write this as s squared minus nine to the negative first power. That's just my own personal preference. You can do whatever you want. Um, so that would be negative three, s squared minus nine to the negative two times two s. So that would give me finally as my final answer, six s over s squared minus nine squared. We're gonna go ahead and use this to go ahead and solve some different equations. This different equation is y prime minus y is equal to t e to the t times the sine of t, y of zero equals zero. So again, what I notice is I have that t sitting there. So when I go to do the Laplace transform of this, Take the Laplace transform of both sides. The Laplace transform of y prime, of course, is s times y of s minus y zero. The Laplace transform of y is just y of s, of course. Now we get into this. And so we have to look at the Laplace transform of t, e to the t, sine of t. So the first thing to do is find out what is the Laplace transform of t to t. Because remember, the formula says it's gonna be minus one to whatever power is on the t, which happens to be a one, times the derivative, which is the same power on the t, the derivative with respect to x, so the first derivative with respect to x times the Laplace transform of e to the t sine of t. So y of zero, happen to be zero in this case, so we can get rid of that. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull this y of s out. So we have s minus one times y of s on the left-hand side of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, we have minus one to the first power, which of course is just negative one. The derivative, the, the sorry, we first have to find out what that Laplace transform is. So again, we go to our table um, you can use the fact that we just talked about that the sine of kt is k over s squared minus k squared 
and then that e to the t will transform the the s to s minus a or number 18 happens to have that one directly for you so i would just probably use that one so what i end up with is the derivative of um one over because my k is one one over s minus the power up here the a up here is a one so s minus one squared plus one and we're going to take the derivative of that so again the derivative of that would be minus one times minus one s minus one squared plus one to the minus two power times the derivative of s minus one squared, which is two times S minus one. Okay. So now that I've done that, um, I'm again, I'm gonna simplify my right-hand side before I try to get this Y over S gone from the left-hand side or by itself from the left-hand side. So I notice I've got a couple of number one, negative ones. I've got a two times S minus one over top of, s minus one squared plus one to the second power. So this is what I now have. I can now solve for y of s by dividing both sides by s minus one. That will give me two over top of s minus one squared plus one squared. So now I've got that by itself. I have a single fraction and I can go ahead and find out what that is. Um, Again, going to my tables. And there's some other properties we could be using, but I do see on my table, I do in fact have an S squared minus K quantity squared. Um, I actually notice I have a, well, we'll just do that one and then we'll worry about how to fill that in. So that gives me an S squared, see we had, S minus one over S minus one quantity squared. So that would look like number 22, which will give me a T hmm. Oh wait, I don't have an S minus one on the top. That's what my problem is. Okay. So let's go back and just look quickly at what we have here again. We have two over S minus one plus uh, quantity squared, all whole thing plus one whole thing being squared. So what I wanna do is I wanna go find that one, kind of that same process. Um, I do see I have an S squared um, plus one squared quantity squared and then a two in the top. So looking at this, I actually do see I have that, that's number 25. It's gonna be the sine of kt minus kt cosine of kt. But remember on mine, we have an s minus one. So that's gonna give me an e to the one power. So we're gonna remember that process. And this is why even though they're on here, you kind of have to know that that happens. So looking at this, I do in fact have this one right here, this kind of idea. And so what we will end up with is we end up with um, e to the t, that's what the s minus one gets you is that e to the t times the sine of t, my k is one, minus t times the cosine of t. The two, normally we take the two out, but in this case, the two is part of my formula. So I left it where it was. And there's your solution. So that's your y of t. And that's your solution. One more, let's look at the y double prime plus y equals f of t. y of zero is one, y prime of zero is zero. And f of t in this case is a piecewise function one when we're between zero and pi halves and sine of t when we're bigger than pi halves. So um, I can do this by using all of our formulas, but I can actually do this. Sometimes it's useful to go use the, um, 
the definition. So we're going to actually do this one through the definition. We're going to take the Laplace of both sides. So the Laplace of y double prime, of course, is s squared times y of s minus s times y zero minus y prime of zero. Y, and the Laplace of y is just y of s. The Laplace of f of t, this actually sometimes, instead of trying to write this in unit step function, which you're more than welcome to do, sometimes it's just as easy to do this using um, the uh, definition. So let's just do that to just show you we can do that. So we have that now. And so we end up with s squared times y of s. Um, y of zero was one, so minus s. Y prime of zero was zero plus y of s is equal to the interval from zero. Now here, remember we're in two different parts. So from zero to pi halves, my function is equal to one. Then from pi halves to infinity, my function is equal to the sine of t. Okay. So I notice I have a y of s, I've got s squared plus one times y of s minus s. We'll leave it on that side for right now, just until we finish doing these integrals. The integral of e to the minus st um, from zero to two pi halves would be um, minus one over s e to the minus st, the value from zero to pi halves. Um, plus we're gonna have the limit as b goes to infinity, the integral from pi halves to, to b, oops. Of e to the minus st, the sine of t dt. So this would be, minus one over s e to the minus pi halves t minus a negative one over s. So just minus one over s or actually minus a negative. So plus one over s um, plus the limit as b goes to infinity. This integral um, is gonna give me s e to the minus pi s over two all over s squared plus one, plus s times the sine of b, plus the cosine of b, e to the minus b s, all over s squared plus one, taking that limit, we end up with s squared plus one times y of s. I'm gonna go ahead and add the s to the side, so we have s plus, one over s minus one over s e to the minus pi has t. And then we end up with this one's gonna be um, the limit of this as b goes to infinity, this is gonna go to just plus s e to the minus pi s over two over s squared plus one. And then the other term goes to zero. So this is what we have. Um, we now want to go ahead and take the Laplace of both sides and see what we end up with. Um, but at first I need to get rid of this S, this, uh, S squared plus one. So Y of S is gonna equal S over S squared plus one, plus one over S times S squared plus one, minus one over S times S squared plus one, E to the minus pi halves S, by that, oops, I have a T there, there should be an S. S, and then plus S E to the minus pi has S over S squared plus one squared. So we then need to, of course, take this and 
um, separate the variables. The s over s squared plus one, that one's fine. The one over s times s squared plus one um, becomes one over s minus s over s squared plus one. Notice we have a plus s over s squared plus one. So those are gonna actually cancel out. So we don't have to worry about those two, they're gone. Um, this one is already simple, is, um, needs to be simplified also. So we're gonna have a minus e to the minus pi s over two over top of s plus an s e to the minus pi s over two over top of s squared plus one. And then we have this plus s e to the minus pi s over two over top of s squared plus one squared. So now all we have to do is do the inverse Laplace. The inverse Laplace of one over s is just t. I'm sorry, it's just one, sorry. I don't, I shouldn't try to do them from memory because you might forget one. So it's one. Um, the inverse Laplace of e to the minus pi s over two over s, well, the inverse Laplace of s is just one. And then e to the minus pi s over two is gonna be your unit step function translated over by pi over s. s over s squared plus one is the cosine of um, one, because my k is one, so one times t. But just for the sake of it, let's just put that that way because I see this e to the minus pi halves s so it's going to tell me I'm going to be u to step function, t minus pi halves. So that means I need a t minus pi halves here. And then plus this piece here, again, going to my table, I'm looking for s over s plus one squared. s squared plus one, pardon me, squared. That's what I'm looking for. So I happen to see that I have an s over s squared plus one squared right here. Um, and that's gonna be the t times the sine of kt. So that's gonna be plus t times the sine of k, which happens to be one times t of t times, the reason I put it this way is because I know I have an e to a power here that's gonna tell me I'm gonna use a step function stepping over, translating over by pi halves, that means I must have a t plus pi, or minus pi halves, sorry, t minus pi halves in each one of these parentheses. So you've got this answer, you can work with this. Um, cosine of t minus pi halves, you could actually think of as being as the sine and the sine of t over, over pi halves is actually the coast that you could do some trig identities with it, but this is basically your answer to this problem.